So welcome to vlog number one of Elsie. So today we're just going to go for a quick drive around or towards Wee Jasper. Today we are installing the ARB twin air compressor. So what should happen is I plug it in and it works. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> What's going on? We're getting ready to go. Again. We've got to get back into vlog mode. We are, yeah. It's been yeah. a long time. It has been. So we are in Chubut. We are just about to leave and go to Parachuna again for like the 50th time. Yes, to so finally, now that it's all opening back up, we are going to be crossing the border. We're going to have to cross through Broken Hill rather than Mildura because obviously you just go through Victoria. And right now, Victoria is in a bit of a lockdown. Uh, yeah. They're having another outbreak. So we're going to have to cross the border at Broken Hill. And then we are doing it properly. We, we have made arrangements to quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So two weeks isolation. We're going to get some editing done for you guys, hopefully. Finally, sort of, we're going in LC. I, I've said this a million times, but it's sort of, we're at a point now where it's done ish and you know there's still a few things to go on it's never obviously finished, finished but, but we're ready to sort of go in it and yeah. I'm, I'm happy with where it's at mechanically and sort of all the weight and we just got new yeah. leaves in this morning new shocks yeah. so spent a couple of grand there but i'd just rather have it done and then have more issues down the road but joys of an old car so yeah. can't complain too much uh yeah we're gonna get going we're gonna get to collie ambly today which is where our farm is and yeah Go there, Broken Hill the next day, and then Parachill the next day, so some serious case. Let's get to it. Let's go. Oh, all right, Elsie. Let's do it. You can do it, baby. Road. We're in the Hilux coming the other way, back from Parachilla, 
and it was uh, foggy as anything. And uh, one of those Angus cows just came out of the darkness. Just, oh, fuck. We were close to hitting it, the ute. Just camouflaged in fog. And yeah, it's definitely a sobering moment. Would not have wanted to hit the cow. That would have been the end of Mr. Highlock, I think. Just stopped for a quick coffee in hay. And now we are about to do hay plain. You! <laughs> hay plain. Such an exciting part of road. It's a pretty boring part of the world. Yes. back obviously just the wind hitting it like this roof rack it's such a temporary thing we are getting another one front runner a really nice full-length roof rack that'll actually see it but obviously it's have, i just haven't buttoned up these enough so so we're just 130 k's out of broken hill on the silver city highway we've never been on here before so it's, it's an interesting drive it's definitely the countryside's um quite interesting you know with all the cypress of mine I just wanted to talk about the Oricom tire pressure monitoring system. Um, it's, it's really good. It's a really cool little system. It's interesting seeing how different when the tires heat up, how much the tire pressures can change. I mean, we're sort of jumping from when they're cold to when they've been running for a while, sort of like six or seven psi. So it's a big jump. You can really see it. Uh, what's also really good about the system, though, is it doesn't just tell you the psi and the pressures. It tells you the temperature as well. So I suppose it's probably really good uh, but if you're having maybe bearing issues and you don't know when it's getting really hot, you're going to be able to um, see that happening. But it's also interesting uh, because we have uh, one mud terrain on that side and I suppose they would create more friction on the road with the, the larger knobs compared to our bald one we've got over here. And that tyre is a couple of degrees hotter, when well, I say a couple, it's actually seven, seven degrees hotter. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, really handy little system. Probably get you out of trouble if you have one, whether it's gonna be shredding tires or bearing issues or something. So yeah, it's cool. We've just put over here because we've just seen two major Mitchells. Oh no, it's flying away. There's a car coming, so I might have missed it. Rolling into Broken Hill now. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, anyway, six o'clock. Eight uh, seven. Eight to seven. There you go. We're going straight to the Palace Hotel for a well-deserved beer and a counter meal. And 
very excited. And then after that, we're going to go out to some rest stop or some little dirt patch and have our first camp in Elsie since we've done the build out the back. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Mm. Get our heated blanket fired up. Yeah. We just had a rest stop outside Broken Hill now. It's only about five minutes out, so drop Dunny. Um, just take Holly to the loveliest places. Uh, so we're going to set up Elsie now. There's heaps of stuff in the back because we're taking a fair bit of stuff back for work for Parachilna. So we'll have more than we usually would camping and also our roof rack situation isn't the best. So we shouldn't have this much usually in here, but we'll see how we go and see what the, how long the setup takes us. But we're going straight to bed because we're tired. There we go, a few teething issues. We need a rooftop tent, this sucks. <laughs> it's just like too much to have to do every night if like we were on yeah. full time. Yeah, if you were just camping for a little bit, it'd yeah, be too bad. Yeah, if you were like, for a weekend, it'd be fine. Or if we needed a stealth option. Yeah. Yeah, rooftop tent, we, we want to put one on this thing. It takes all your bedding out of the car and it's just so much better not having to make your bed every single night so i think this would be good as a stealth option if we need to and just have the rooftop tent on top and that's our main bed and then we can make these cushions thinner so we just can sit on them in here and just make them a bit easier to, to work with so this is what it looks like inside it's not massive not massive at all it's probably the size of a single bed <laughs> better than i don't know a swag better than a swag yeah better than being on the ground yeah at least we're inside plugged the 12 volt heater blanket in See how she goes. Yeah. <laughs> so spacious. Wow, so much spots. For two adults. <laughs> that's, that's not too bad, it's pretty big. You're a pretty big adult as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a short person, and neither am I. <laughs> Lovely. I fit, lengthways. Awesome. Now Holly's just gonna go in here. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. Oh, well, it's going to have to get very, very snuggly. Good morning, everyone. So, we just, uh, I woke up, got out of the car, and I was just, like, looking around. This guy just standing there. He's like, sup? And I'm like, hey! <laughs> and he's like, love you, troopy. And then, what does he have? And look, it's an FTE. <laughs> it's probably, I'm, I'm not just stroking his ego, but, um, this is the nicest FTA I think I've ever seen. Thanks. So what's your name? Rick. Rick. And you have a couple of 40s, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of them. Couple. 70. <laughs> yeah, I collect them, but yeah, they're good stuff. It's like a commodity, I like to see them. Some would say it's a disease. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> nah, it's unreal, man. Really cool. Crazy. He's made a smoothie with the Nutribullet. Oh the, good. Yeah, on the um, inverter, so good. The 1000 watt inverter, smash the Nutribullet, so mm. good. It's actually really nice. It's kind of warming up now, like, I'm yeah, into the t-shirt. Yeah. So having like a nice cold smoothie is really good. What a weird morning, like, that guy, like, he, so he has Thingo Cruises in, on the Gold Coast, so I think he's got a pretty big shop. He just has a, like a massive workshop. He has like 70 40 series that he's doing up. 15 blokes, so he's like big operation. Anyway, we're gonna get going to town. We need to fill up, we're pretty low. Get heaps of supplies, go to the Silly Goat, get a coffee before we cross the border. So we'll get to it. That's crazy meeting someone like that, eh, on the road. Who knows, like we, uh, we'll probably catch up with him again in the Gold Coast. We might go around his workshop and like, we're the people who meet in the road, eh? Yeah, we haven't, I, I said to him, I was like, he's like, yeah, man, I've got like heaps of 12 HTs just sitting there in the workshop, waiting to be put in cars. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, I'll, I'll drop the troop in and we'll drop a 12 HT in it. Got, uh, had this uh, brekkie burger before. Last time we were in uh, Broken Hill, Elsie was getting a few little things done and we got this brekkie burger and it was amazing. So we got it again. Silly goat, nice mm. cafe, very nice cafe. We had to get takeaway because of COVID. Mm. So back on the road, we just did a shop in Broken Hill, just getting everything but fruit and veg. And here now we have 44 cases to the border. Hopefully we've crossed the full woods with our permits. Yep. Nice. 
back in Para. We made it. Last time Elsie was here she was looking a bit different. <laughs> she was getting towed around as well. <laughs> She's getting towed around by a little Hilux. <sighs> Done. We made it. Nice one. We did it, we did it, we did it again. Hello everyone, Hello. Matt and Holly here, coming to you from Parachilna in South Australia. We've just finished our first shift for the day. Well, I'm going back in tonight, cleaning dishes and making salads and everything for the lovely patrons coming through. If you want to come through and meet us, then definitely jump by the prairie and say good day. We love people saying hello. Make sure you book though. You have yeah, to book you have to, to book in. COVID restrictions and everything, guys. We've got to we've got to do our part. We're just making this little video now, just to say that we're actually going to be running out of content just for a little while. Obviously, with the th way things have been, just in regards to COVID, um, you know what it's like. You know, we haven't been able to travel as much as we were going to this year. We were delayed with Elsie getting it registered. Mm. Just a few other things like that. So it, we're we're caught up on our content. We're still going to have a few things coming out. What do we got? We have our Australian highlights video from last year to come out. We oh. have a rig rundown coming out. A rig rundown. Hopefully, um, we're going to have some more rig rundowns. I've been talking yeah. to a few people coming up here that we might be able to do some rig rundowns. Yeah, we're also hoping to get out maybe a few teaser videos. We're creating a film at the moment or trying to on our day off. We might try and do a behind the scenes of that. Even if yeah. you have any suggestions of videos that you want us to do that we can do. Uh, we, kind of, we kind of have an idea. Again, comment if you think this would be good of maybe doing like a, a region uh, of Australia, say, mm. you know, east coast of Tassie, ultimate road trip and just like a highlight of um, all the things to do in the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, just to sort of compact our vlogs a bit more and make them you know, a bit more easily consumable if you're thinking about doing a trip uh, to certain regions of Australia. So if you want to see something like that, definitely tell us. But um, oh, another thing, I mean, it's so frustrating that Elsie's done, Elsie's parked outside. She's been sitting there just itching to get to the Flinders. Uh, we've got a little bit more gear going on. We're getting a roof rack mm -hmm. from Front Runner, which we're super excited about. And we've got some uh, really cool mud terrains getting on from Falcon, yeah. so super keen to get the wild peaks on uh, and see what they can do in the Flinders. But really frustrating because it's all done and this culmination of all this effort. And uh, as Holly said, we have a film uh, in the works. I don't want to give too much away, but it's kind of the way I want the channel to move into the future, really mm -hmm. upping the production quality, feature length, you know, hour long, 45 minutes. 
and get away from the sort of quick vloggy stuff and do less videos but of a higher quality. That's the plan and we had a, a Flinders Range video mm. to start but it's just going to be a bit delayed. We're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we've put out a video every week for the past two years. Yeah, so we've done pretty well. We'll be around. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere and uh, we've got some big plans for the channel. We're definitely not going to let it fall by the wayside at this stage. We've put yes. Too much effort and we like you guys watching it too much at the moment. So we're just going to keep at it, we think. Oh, we just want to say a quick thank you to everyone for following our Elsie journey from when we initially bought it in Perth, drove it back across Australia and then the rebuild and the fit out of it. it was and one all the support, of, yeah. uh, especially our patrons, mm. the money that they pledge every month. It is literally just going into that car and yeah. just going into... Um, funding uh, the videos so we really appreciate the patrons and anyone who's bought a sticker or a bit of merch it really helps the ebook or the ebook yeah yeah it all really helps um, so really thank you for that we really also we have new merch coming out soon so make sure yeah, you keep an cool eye stuff. on that yeah cool stuff cool retro stuff well uh, thanks for watching and tune back in when we'll be back into your eyeballs soon via the internet yes and hopefully um, sooner rather than later cheers for watching it's Matt, it's Matt's Camp Cooking Show. G'day everyone, welcome to another Matt's Camp Cooking Show. We're coming to you from the Flinders Ranges. Uh, beautiful weather right now, late afternoon. We're in isolation, so it's a good time to get some camp cooking done. What are we cooking today? Cooking one of our favorite dinners that we cooked in our big lap. It's very economical, very cheap, and a lot of the ingredients you don't need a fridge for. It's a lot of canned items, uh, dry pasta and things like that. So what is it? We are cooking a tuna bucatini. What is a bucatini? Bucatini is a tubular pasta, so it's like a straw. So essentially it takes up all the flavors and uh, all the sauce on the inside, which is really good. Funny story about it, I said to my granddad one night that we were cooking tuna bucatini and he said, what? I said, tuna bucatini, he goes, tuna what? I'm like, bucatini, it's like a tubular pasta. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. It's tuna bucatini. And that's literally the only thing he did differently was this with his hands, so. It's a uh, really delicious dish and I'll get into it now. Uh, what are you gonna need? So we've just got a bit of uh, olive oil here, Really basic stuff, salt, um, anchovies, we've got can of tuna, obviously uh, bucatini, it either comes in a packet that says bucatini or the San Remo stuff says tubular spaghetti. Uh, capers, a little bit of tomato paste, mixed Italian herbs, chili, garlic and some cherry tomatoes and then rocket and lemon to finish the dish off. Also, all the gear we're cooking with today has been provided by Campfire Australia. Uh, they just do heaps of really cool camp cooking items, and if you want to check any of that stuff out, uh, their link to their website will be in the description below. All right, so we're going to get started. In this pot, we've just got a bit of water, this cast iron pot. Just going to put a pinch of salt in. Two pinches. All right. Now just going to bung that on the fire and get it to a rolling boil. Beautiful. Okay, while that's boiling we will get our uh, first lot of ingredients ready. So we're going to cut up our garlic and our chilli. as much garlic as you want and I'm going to put four cloves in because I enjoy that. Really should have a wine for this. It's not very Matt's camp cooking show. The, pur the purists will be angry. Give me a like if you're angry. <laughs> Don't dislike. Also obviously not the best knife skills but you know, it's out there having a go. What I'm going to do now, uh, quickly, is just um, put this pan on the heat uh, and then I can bring it over the table and I can cook in it. But yeah, we're not going to get it too hot, we're just going to get a nice bit of heat in there to start cooking. Alright, so next up I've just got a chilli here. Um, it's not a particularly hot one, you can go as hot or as not as hot as you like. I'm probably going to leave about half the seeds in. out. Mm. 
Beautiful chilies are chopped up. I've got some anchovies here. Just gonna grab maybe five or six. If you've got a can, a little tin of them, that usually is fine. Keep the oil that they come in. Um, obviously there's a lot of flavor in that, so we can use that. So this is sort of your flavor base of the dish. This is where you're getting most of your flavors from. Quite pronounced. Obviously, with the anchovies, uh, chili and garlic. Okay, great, that's all chopped up. Only other thing I've got to cut up is just my little cherry tomatoes. Um, we don't need to put them in just yet, but I'm just gonna chop them in half. We can just put them to the side. So now that all our cutting up's done, it's really not much, um, nice and quick. We're just gonna go grab our pan off the fire and we can start cooking. That is nice and hot, that skillet. All right, so we're gonna put a little olive oil in. Just to test the heat. Okay, that's good. It's not smoking, so it's not too hot. All right, I'm actually gonna use, because this is uh, tuna and olive oil, so I'm actually just gonna use oil out of that because that is good flavor. <laughs> what is? A little bit of extra oil, um, probably a couple of tablespoons. Um, decent amount of oil in this because there's not much sauce to this sort of uh, recipe. It's quite a light um, and uh, oily kind of pasta, I'd say. So we're gonna put all that in. Stir it around. Is this mixed Italian herbs? Add a little bit more oil to that. Beautiful. I'm gonna cook that through till it's nice and fragrant. Might just whack it on the heat for a little bit longer. Beautiful. All right, so that's got a nice bit of color to it now. We'll take it off. Okay, so we're gonna add a few more of our ingredients now. Capers, our tuna. Just gonna get that back on the heat. All right, so our water's boiling here in our pot. Back out the patini in. All that pasta's cooking. I'll get this off the heat and get the cherry tomatoes in. Now, this is optional. But we like to put a little bit of tomato paste in, just a little, couple little spoonfuls. And then I like to save a bit of the starchy water from the pasta, uh, just to put in. All right, so my tomatoes uh, are now in, and I'm just gonna whack it back on the heat. Okay, so I'm just gonna scoop a little of starchy water in. All right, that bucatini is almost al dente, so I'm going to throw some rocket into the sauce, nice peppery little taste um, to our pasta sauce. I'll put that in now. That bucatini is done. So, I'm gonna get this off the heat. Okay, not the nicest presentation, but it'll do. Uh, what are we gonna put on? What do you like to put on? Um, we love our Parmesan, so I like to give it a very generous sprinkle of that. Um, a bit of salt and pepper to taste. And then also, bit of lemon and there you have it guys it's not the best presentation but uh, I can assure you it's a delicious meal and as I said very economical cheap quick easy 
um, and it's a crowd pleaser, that's for sure. So uh, if you like this recipe, give us a thumbs up. Um, this recipe and, and a couple of others are actually in our ebook, uh, which you can purchase now. It's full of handy tips and tricks for your big lap. So yeah, thanks for watching and get out there and get, do some camp cooking and see you next time. Cheers.